matcha. Yum ass, as they say in Greek. Yum. Cranberry ginger ale. Love it. Can only get it with some of your. It makes me sad. Also, shout out to Canada Dry for being the best kind of ginger ale. Maybe? Ooh, is that a lie? I do like Schweppes as well. Anywho. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Thea. And this is Garden Goddess Tarot. There's not going to be too much garden related stuff today. Um, still winter. <laughs> Very much still winter. But there's going to be lots of tarot and and goddess things, I guess, so, um, so yeah, so strap in. Today's video is going to be kind of the yearly wrap-up video, and I was thinking of separating them all into a bunch of different videos, like a sensible person would do, but it seems to be my habit just to, like, throw everything <laughs> into all of the videos, because there's no such thing as separation, right? It is all unity. <laughs> so we'll just have everything here. This is the yearly wrap-up. This is going to be, like, my favorite most worked with decks of the year, which is gonna sound like a broken record because of the last couple of tarot deck related videos I've made, but that's fine. Um, it's just kind of, it'll be a nice like yearly overview, yearly wrap up. I'm gonna talk about my journal plans and for next year, as well as the depth here and how it went and what we're gonna be doing moving forward. So, um, might end up being a long video. So let's drive in. <laughs> It should be fun. I'm having a great time. I'm in a fantastic mood. I hope you are as well. I hope your holidays, Christmas, Yule, whatever, whatever season, seasonal celebration you partook in went swimmingly and that you are now enjoying the beautiful liminal space in between New Year's, Rhea Gregorian calendar and, and the festivities. It's always kind of nice. I have had to work a couple of days in between, but it's just, it's been nice. <laughs> um, this is my kiffy, um, and I'm going to light one for today, I think, just to have a little, little aromatic ambience. Oh wait, did I? I didn't get charcoal! Oh my gosh, I'm the worst. Ein Minuten bitte. Alright, always remember fire safety, kids. <laughs> oh boy. Alright, charcoal brick is mostly going. There she goes. Look at her. Oh, she smells absolutely divine. I made this. <laughs> so good. Alright, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, I think first off, I just wanted to say what a year. <laughs> it's been just the absolute enjoyment I get out of coming roughly-ish once a month and just like spilling my guts to all you fine folk. It just makes me so happy. So thank you so much for being here, first off. Like, you were the reason. So thank you, you were special and I love you so much. <laughs> Awkward sentiments aside, um, 2022 was going to be a depth year for me. It was a depth year. Like, absolutely no denying it was a depth year. However, the scope and the initial um, intention of that depth here did alter and shift throughout the year, which was very interesting. And I think we're gonna we're gonna talk about explore that a little bit. Um, my word of the year for last year, 2022. Very slight. I saying last year, like it's over already. There's a day and a half left of it. <laughs> um, but my word of the year was creation, and I was really really into exploring that in a multitude of ways whether just uh, exercising my own creative muscle, making things, like taking what goes on in here, all of the the weird rumblings of, of, of ideas and inspiration and, and stories and myth and like rolling them around my brain and then getting them out into the world, into, into, into the real world. And it was a, it was, was a challenge, but I, I think I, I, I achieved what I set out to do and I was, you know, very excited and yeah, it was just, it was a, it was a great year to explore that word. I also, um, it's kind of like a, a tricksy double word because it also um, offered me the opportunity to dive into a bunch of different creation myths because that's, that's one of my favorite things about spirituality is really, really like finding all of the different creation myths and then seeing the similarities across the board and really like I feel like those threads that kind of run through all of them, they're like the same core center of everyone's belief and that's where, you know, everything really kind of, kind of lies. So 
anyway that's been really fun and i really enjoyed that and i'm i'm not mad that that word was last year so the word of 2022 <laughs> so that was great um but alas that chapter has been shut and we're we're, we're moving right along to the next one and the word the word for next year also found me and the word for next year i think is it 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 rides the coattails of creation quite well it uh, it, it it made sense it, it was really only the type of word that could follow such a grand a grand choice of word and so so the the word of the year for for next year is going to be sacred it found me and it was like no you're not allowed to have any other word this is the word so specifically what i'm i'm feeling i need to focus on is um Okay, so for me, I, I kind of went through like the tearing down phase of, of, I don't know, thought experiments where everything is nothing and nothing is everything and, you know, what does anything mean? Oh my gosh, it was very much like a walls coming down sort of situation, figuring out what I am, where I am, what's going on, who is what, what is where. <laughs> And it kind of kind of left a great deal of, of, of confusion and it, it it was it was the the blanking of the slate right it had to had to be cleared things had to be moved away to be able to start again and so I think the first step in in that so we had creation which kind of mirrors our, our magician card right nicely and then the next one is gonna mirror the the high priestess card and it's gonna be um, the word of the year for 2023 is is sacred so it'll be making making things sacred choosing what it is that to me personally is going to be sacred it is going to be assessing the things in my life asking about their sacred qualities it's also going to be a um major part of the year in regards to setting boundaries so this is kind of like a sub word so there's gonna be the main word of the year for next year is gonna be sacred be figuring out what to me personally is sacred how i'm going to celebrate those sacred things making things special again etc etc as well as setting boundaries and realizing the importance and sacredness of my personal space and my personal time and you know what is worth things to me and putting myself first in that regard so it's kind of fun <laughs> love that so that is the the plan for uh for next year and it's oh, i just love very excited about the direction the next year is going to be taking We've got lots of fun things planned and I won't spoil them for right now because we're going to get into those eventually. Um, but let's, let's circle back around to the depth here. Um, the depth here started out specifically as an, um, an opportunity to streamline my focus and really go deep in the places I wanted to. I wanted to reduce the distraction. I wanted to reduce the visual and physical noise around me to really like, you know, dive. <laughs> And oh my gosh, did I, did I do that? Um, however, the um, the original kind of plan of it being like a no bag type of depth here of a of a you know eschewing sh material possessions for the sake of you know um, I don't know. No one, no one is more or less spiritual based on the amount of materiality in their lives. We live in a material world. The world is a material, <laughs> material matter cannot be created nor destroyed. It's just kind of around. So we got, we're gonna have to deal with it. Like, you're not gonna escape it. You're not gonna escape the material world until said axe falls, right? So, how how much or how little you invite into your life has no bearing on how much of a spiritual person you are. I'm just getting that out there right now. Um, how you engage with that material world you live in is what we get to play around with the bits that we can control right um and what we choose to do with that is entirely up to us and unique to our own individual paths which i think is quite fun um so so for me it kind of it shifted from a uh, materially focused to depth here to a extremely more like an intellectually focused depth here um where i was just i was learning i was going down rabbit holes constantly um specifically with um the deck and long <laughs> We, we started in March and it's still going, it'll, it'll end next year, but it was a really great way to bring um, a focus to tarot in a, in a timely sort of way. So this practice is really helping me with using tarot for timing purposes, which is great. It really fleshes out the meaning of each of the minor cards of 
of like the minor arcana in a temporal sense so you can it almost adds like a wheel of the year onto tarot for you which is great so you can really understand more of the meaning of of that card right now we're in the two of pentacles which is the first decan of capricorn so it's very much about matter cycling um change and as i said um that you know matter cannot be created or destroyed it just like is doomed to morph for all eternity <laughs> so that changes what's inevitable and that's just part of you know the the rules of the world that we live in and we just get to deal with that um and so as for right now like we're in a in-between phase between like seasonal festivities and you know the the blank slate of the new year and it's the whole thing <laughs> so anyway yes the, the the change of the two of pentacles lines up with the fresh start that most people tend to get excited about moving into the new year and um it's a way to kind of venerate that idea of of change instead of being afraid of it which is nice so i like how that kind of ties in with our current decan of like the calendar year right now so it's, it's just finding a way that each of that those 10 day periods aligns with the seasonal happenings and the social happenings of of that time and it's been it's been great <laughs> so the deck and walk has been like a major part of the death year and very very grateful to be doing it with the group of people that I'm doing it with as well as just having it be a private practice as well it's like that sweet spot in between like too much and not enough so I've been very very thankful for that what else did we do on the depth here that was oh gosh we did i did the novena that was a big one we did a nine day hermes novena which i'm by we i mean me and meg <laughs> hey rose sunday ritual we both um spent some serious time you know working with honoring venerating celebrating giving gifts to it was just it was like dating the best way i could say it is it was like a, a beautiful like like a dating experience with with the deity so if if you're getting to know if you're if you're starting your deity work journey if you're getting to know one if you're just in the beginning a novena a nine day devotional is or however many days you want like but nine nine is nice nine is like not too long um not too short it's it's just like the right amount of commitment it's beautiful but we suggest you know giving it a go just you know if you don't have an altar make like a little space give offerings have a chat like pick a deck work with them have a chat every so often you know like do whatever you feel you need to do to kind of build that relationship with that energy and you'll have a great time so that was that was a really great part of 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 the depth here as well um i dove quite deeply into tree of life work um working with sephiroth working on the tree of life with the major arcana as well as the miners and, and the courts just the tarot on the tree of life that was a big part of the beginning of the year 2022 i made kifi <laughs> as we're experiencing right now um it was that was a really big I, that took two weeks that was a two week basically devotional practice to um to not only the the earth spirits that created the ingredients i was using but the history of the incense itself in the context of human spirituality over so much time so that was amazing that was fun it was great and thoroughly enjoying being able to use that in my practice now that was a really really fulfilling practice if you're curious about it the making of that kifi or the um ancient temple incense i have a video series on it you're more than welcome to check it out because i think it's so much fun um also i went to greece <laughs> Like, I was starting to think, I was thinking back, I'm like, oh, death here, what did I do? And then I started, like, writing out and listing the things that happened this last year, and I was like, holy heck. I'm like, I did so much, I need not feel bad at all. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm walking the, the road, I'm, I'm in the right direction, I'm going, and things are happening. It's just, because I'm so immersed in it, I don't really notice, right? It's, it's so cool, it's great. So yeah, I went to Greece for three weeks again, and had a time, it was, the universe has a way of like smacking you in the face with everything you need to deal with when you need to deal with it so there was some stuff that came up which again leads into my direction for 2023 so it was all very important in what happened but but just you know finding bits of myself that needed worked on is basically what happened while I was away which is totally fine and um important and it's it's it plays into the boundary work anyway we'll get into that later when i do do the grace video i'm about two months out from 
from the trip like it's in the past it's far enough away I think it's time that I'll revisit my experience there and, and bang together a, a retrospective as well as delightfully visual compendium of, of the adventure and it's gorgeous it's so beautiful oh my goodness so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to, to being ready to share that so that'll that'll be coming which is good but yeah that was that was part of the the depth here and again it was just you know remembering that I can do things but if, if I want in my heart of hearts to do things I can and nothing's gonna stop me when I really want something I do it and if I'm not doing it then did I really want it you know <laughs> so that was really cool um I also started a new job this year at the metaphysical shop where I started doing readings for the public so like that'll happen this year um offering readings up and I've been like a tarot reading machine lately and I've been really like streamlining the process and it's just been so rewarding for like both me and everybody who I work with it's just it fills me with so much joy <laughs> to be able to you know you know guide and help and and offer my experience and my knowledge of working with tarot with other people so it's just been been so great so yeah 2022 has been the year of that that as well on the garden front I did expand large swaths of the garden as well I really took the time to appreciate what was there watch it grow and change throughout the year and just kind of approach gardening with a more like hands-off and patient let the plants kind of look after themselves kind of mindset instead of trying to be in control all the time which is a big change to the way when I started gardening it was very much I put this here it's gonna grow and it's gonna look like this all the time but that's not how gardening works <laughs> unfortunately I learned I learned that's not how it works it's going to do what it wants to do and I'm just again there to guide it I can suggest certain things I can try moving things around but plants are gonna grow where they want to grow and I can only encourage that to help them as much as I can with you know my fingers <laughs> and and hands and feet which they unfortunately do not have so it's just been great it's I feel like it more like a like a stewardship almost I'm like just here looking after it as opposed to being like an almighty creator but there was a time where I very much felt like okay this is my garden I am in charge I decide who lives and dies I you know it's like it was like my domain right um oh, <laughs> the almighty um in charge in charge of my garden which I've 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 slow I've I've taken a step back from that particular mindset. I'm just kind of in a okay, let the plants do what they want to do. Let the ones grow where they want to grow. Is this really a weed? Question mark. Does it come out or not? You know, I'm I'm a little bit I'm a lot more lax in that department, but it's more about creating a a, a beautiful sacred space kind of outside with living plant babies, you know? So yeah, that's that's been great as well. <laughs> so so yeah, the, that last year was, I'm sure there's more things that I can't even think about, but I think like the underlying big exclamation point at the end of that sentence is like, tarot was there for me the whole year, 2022, tarot was always there and it can be counted on, relied on, a comfort, a joy, a challenge, a conversation, and I'm just so thankful for it, having it in my life in general, so, so yeah. <laughs> Also that. And we have a nice clear direction for where we're going next year. And I'm so excited because I'm not really a planner person. Like I don't, I'm very impulsive and spontaneous. Whether those words are the same word or not, I'm not really sure. They could be. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very both of those. <laughs> so um, I don't do a lot of meticulous planning ahead. And if I, like when one plans really, really meticulously, one is setting oneself up for disappointment in the event that the, those said plans don't necessarily go. So I tend to be a little bit more lax about it if things happen, if they don't, so on and so forth. But I have a habit of being very like nose to the grindstone when I want something specific and it has to happen quickly. So there's a few adventures and a few, um, few things I've got on my sleeve for next year, which I'm very very excited about and I with with the things that I learned from 2022 in my back pocket who knows where the universe is gonna take me however I do fear an impending tower moment we shall see <laughs> we shall see <laughs> that is a way of like when you're up too high knocking you down a little bit so we'll, we'll see yeah it's 
I'm ready for anything. Um, oh my goodness, I almost forgot what else happened in 2022. Read the word of the year, my creation word. Um, the Hellenic Oracle deck became a thing. Um, it was kind of a little bit of a thing at the beginning of the year, but it really got into its its stride in, uh, in 2022. And uh, I'm just... <laughs> I love that so many people invited it into their lives. So it, it came back this year. It got expanded and improved this year. Sorry, I'll just yoink it out. This, this is the, the version that's out now. This 100 card behemoth of Greek mythology. Uh, this deck, it also came to grace with me and was on the nose every time. It's at this at this point it's like a friend. This deck is never leaving my side. It's just it's a guide. It's you know it shows me myself in the most pleasant. Hi, <laughs> hey bud. Um, yeah, it just yeah it it shows me myself even the hard things. It's it's a more accurate mirror than a reflective piece of glass. Let me just say that. So it's it's incredible and it it really it. I don't know that it took off, but it, you know, made itself comfortable in the world this year. And that makes me so absolutely thrilled. So that was fun. And, 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 not only did it become a thing, so it released itself from the confines of my brain. Um, it finally got expanded. I finally hunkered down and made the expansion pack. So the packs are exactly the same, a little 50 card expansion pack of men and monsters. It's like the Neiman Lion here, the Minotaur. The updated cards from the other one are in here. So if you have the first edition, this one's perfectly adequate to suit your needs. Nymphs there, Tethys, Daedalus. So all of our mortals kind of are in here, here Acteon. So all of those mortal myths where the, the gods kind of intervene are, are included, maybe not all, but you know, a good swath of them. Amphitrite made it in here, what an angel. Thesis, there's another deity. Pygmalion and Galatea. So yeah, this, this finally birthed itself and is incredibly, it's, it's useful. I find, I, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest because it's what I do here. <laughs> I use the Hellenic Oracle, like the original one and or the expanded one. Um, I use this one more and I really am not personally super interested in including the mortals in my deck. I like to keep them separate and I don't use them as much because I find them a completely different energy. They're very, I don't know, it's when working with, with mortals, it's just, I know it's still myth, right? It's still myth, it's still story. It, it, there is morality kind of weaved in with it and, um, you know, ways to apply to, to modern life and situations for sure. But there's just something about working with strictly the deities in the Hellenic Oracle, the original one, and the revised edition. Both of those are interchangeable because the original one's not available anymore. Anyway, confusing, but using the big one, of the gods, I find personally more useful, more rewarding, and more what I'm kind of looking for in an oracle deck. But this one's really stinking cool too. So and maybe I just haven't, you know, spent the time with it. I spent a great deal of time with it while I made it, but it doesn't, I don't, I don't feel the need to mix in the mortals with the deities myself. So, so yeah. A year for the books, am I right? So I guess that's a lovely segue into which decks I use the most <laughs> in 2022. Um, to nobody's surprise, the, the Hellenic Oracle is probably top or near the top of that list. I spent a lot of time with it and I was very glad to have it with me and by my side for my adventure. And another deck that I am so glad that someone convinced me to take with me on my adventures. This one. This deck might have changed my life. <laughs> I know it did. It didn't, it not might have, it did. It's the Ritual Tarot by Tira May. And I have gone on about this very much in many a video, but it's perfect. 
it came into my life right at the right time. I was having a bit of a collage deck moment as it was. And then this one, the synchronicities that like, <sighs> this deck is so much more than it looks even. There's so much in it. It's, it tastes of human history as well as holding those strong divine energies as well. It's everything. It's so good. <laughs> and I'm so glad that it came to Greece with me because it was not only like a great tool for self-exploration, but oh my goodness, it was a comfort and a joy. It kept normalcy in my life. It kind of reminded me who I was <laughs> while I was away. And yeah. It was, there's no words, only, only, like, in, intense adoration and so much gratitude for Tierra for making this most incredible thing. <laughs> so, the Ritual Tarot is to no one's surprise also equally at the top of that list. And I think if I had only had those two decks, my deck and the Ritual Tarot, I might have been missing maybe, maybe this, but probably be fine. But however, I do not live in a, in a world where that is, is necessary. So we do have lots of other, other decks that accompanied me on my, my travels throughout time and space <laughs> at a very fixed rate this last year. And the RWS is, you know, I, I love reading with it. I do. Always will. Always have. This is the 1909, um, the Los Carabeo one. I... The cardstock. It's my favorite. <laughs> so, this one usually uh, always comes out in a reading for, for others. Um, this one and actually while I'm here, the Pre-Raphaelite Tarot has been one that likes reading for others a lot. These two together, <laughs> which is weird because they don't aesthetically match at all. Um, but just they, I don't know, they get along really well. They clarify each other really well. They, it's a, it's, it's a joy. So I just, I love reading for others with this just to keep it clear and concise. And I am most skilled with this one. I've had the most experience with the RWS. That's just a fact. I've had 20 years of experience with this deck. It is only within the last like three years that I've really broadened my tarot scope into other decks. So fundamentally this one I am the best at. <laughs> so yeah. Cannot do a top whatever list without including it. And then it's it's baby brother, the Thoth. <laughs> I like to think of the Thoth as like the petulant younger brother of the RWS. So the RWS is like the older sibling who's like trying to like keep everybody in line and be like, hey, this is how we're gonna do this. I figured this out. And then the Thoth comes in and he's like, Rah! what do you mean? Break the rules. But like still does tarot and is still equally valid, but just like a little bit more of that like rebellious energy. <laughs> The thought has just been the petulant middle child of, of my tarot decks recently. And it's fun and I love it. <laughs> but yeah, do you agree? Thoth, definitely a middle child deck. Comment below. <laughs> RW de RWS definitely has like oldest sibling vibes though. Can you guess which, I have many brothers and sisters. Can you guess where I lie on that? There's four of us. You get, you get bonus cool points if you guess right. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, okay, and, um, oh, uh, 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 I'm so excited. <laughs> I guess sensibly to follow the thought in most, you know, decks of 2022, um, the Asherah Tarot has, it also came to grace with me. It's my adventure tarot, tarot deck, and it's just fun. This is probably one of my more, like, modern faves. Like, this one is, <laughs> it's just, like, and it's so wee. I think, would I like it as much if it was the bigger one? Probably, but just this like little bridge poker sized one is, is so fun. Look at that. I love a, fa a facey sun. <laughs> but yeah, it's great for adventure tarot. It likes being out in the world. I brought this to the Orville Peck concert. I brought it on many a nature walk. I brought it to Greece. I, you know, read with this on a boat. You know, it's, it's a delight. 
and it just has a way of like the colors this is one of my more colorful decks right it's bright it's um it tells a story pretty pretty clearly with with color and form and shape and i love that about it so that's a that's a standout deck from 2022 for sure um sarah wheatley sorry is the creator of, of this one um and i guess i can't can't do a a faves video without shoving the hermetic tarot down your throat but if you haven't tried it because you look you think it looks scary give it a go if you're into working with tarot in the kind of golden dawn perspective if you kind of find the brain tinglies and the exciting connections between the astrological associations and the cards as well as the you know numerology and elemental aspects of tarot try it you will like it i promise give a black and white deck a try it's in order still it'll always be in order probably unless i get a second copy to do actual readings with but right now it's like it's my deck and walk deck i keep it in order so i can pull the cards out as i need and they stay on their little her, little little hermetic deck and walk altar and it's just i it's such a i just enjoy the practice so much i really do and it's easy enough a lot of people have asked for a specific video about the deck and walk um <sighs> like a series of videos about the deck and walk and like I could but me telling you my experience with it isn't going to help really like it's okay me telling you the ingredients to a cake are not going to explain to you what it tastes like eating it and that's kind of how I feel about this right so all you have to do is get a list of the deck and dates and the the cards there's one in one milo to cut soft book among others there's also images of them online um you just need a deck and wheel an astrological deck and wheel i think looks like looks like this in the middle of the long milo to cut book and then you just make a point to every 10 days find the card that is associated with those 10 days and their associated major arcana based on what sign and planet are represented and then you think about it for a little bit. You think about what that, you know, what does that astrological sign mean? Like right now, what does Capricorn mean to me? What does that Capricorn mean to me in relation to the number two for the two of pentacles? What does Capricorn mean to me in relation to the element of Earth? Jupiter, what does Jupiter, the planet, mean to me? And what does it mean to me in relation to the number two and Capricorn and Earth element? Like you just kind of add all those layers on top of each other, as well as the hermetic titles. So, um, Lord of Change, that mean and with so you just kind of like put all of the ingredients together in your brain think about them feel them experience them apply them to your time and space right now and then you basically are just growing your internalized meanings of the cards and then you can use that information later on when you're doing readings for people and you know notice it, it helps in noticing synchronicities tying everything together once, once you get a feel for the energetic signature of those cards based on all of that information it just helps so much with reading tarot so that's kind of how the deck and walk has been helping me specifically and i don't know this is the cole's nose version of one but yeah as i said i think me explaining to you my like personal breakdown of all of the meanings of all of those things in relation to the deccans and the way i read tarot isn't going to be as valuable as you doing it yourself going through each of the days yourself really just getting to know all of those layers of information and what together flavor of cake they make <laughs> you know and like cake analogy i love it but anyway that's that's kind of my best advice there just just do the thing you can start whenever you don't have to start when the astrological season rolls around in the beginning of every season you can start right now <laughs> if you want to just basically start paying attention to what Deccan it is and the information around it. You can keep a journal to make notes of these things or like me, you can just think about them for an hour or so every 10 days. Like no one's, no one's grading you on this, right? There's no right and wrong answer. It's just a, a experiment of experience. So that's why it's fun. <laughs> So yes, that's the deck and walk and that's the hermetic tarot and why I highly recommend it because it's great It's got the hermetic titles right on it. It has the signs and planets on every one of the cards. It makes it super easy You can use the RWS. You can use the Thoth. You can use the Astra if you want um, But I just the fact that the hermetic titles are there on this one works for me personally 
and as I said, soft spot for black and white decks. Um, yes, okay. Another one I would be loath to not mention. Um, it would be an absolute travesty if I did not mention it because I use it every single day is the Davis of Creation. Um, not the multi-dimensional Davis, but the original Davis of Creation. Backs look like this. Um, it, I, it, I use it for daily draws every single day. It sets the tone for my day. It lives on my altar. It doesn't, it has a bag. It's never been in it. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. So it's very, um, you know, earth, physical reality energy. And then there's a few like more numinous sections of it, which talk more about like bigger concepts, but for the most part, it is about the physical expressions of the universe in kind of energetic form. And it's so good. And it's just, oh, I love it. This is how I love to experience Oracle working with cards. It's just a beautiful, quick little meditative practice. And I use it, I tie it in with whatever. I usually have a secondary Oracle up on top of the altar. Right now it's the um, Kim Cran's Wild Unknown Alchemy deck, which is going well. I've been liking that one. Sometimes you get overlap because the planets are in both, which is fun. It's like, ooh, it's a very planetary day today. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's incredibly useful for, you know, if you've got an astral optically based practice, if you've got an energetic practice, if you, you know, like to deal with the expressions of energy in the universe, it's great. And like, there's no disruptive titles there's a tiny little number in the bottom which you use to look it up in the book if you don't know what it is by looking at it which I often do no shame in that um, it's just and it's beautiful just the color and the shape you really get that one that's these early ones yeah that's number two hard to see there is it is a painting there we go that's what it looks like very it's just an expression of energy beautiful Gaia card anyway I'm I love this one it's great. It's balanced. It's everything I want out of a daily draw deck. And it would take one heck of an oracle deck to knock it from its its place. Let me just say that. So yeah, that Kim Cram Kim Cran's Alchemy deck and the Kim Cran's Archetypes deck have been kind of filling my Oracle niche these days. This one is also phenomenal for reading for other people. It is so good at bringing focus about, it brings up things from the depths. It really, if you're, if you like a psychological approach, <laughs> the mixture of these together is just mm, like purely cosmic energetic mixed with the like s experiential psychological type slant of this. It just, oh, readings are so good. So yeah, no, this is, this is a heavy hitter for sure. And I really like using it and it's been incredible this last year. I would say it's not it's not underrated. I think a lot of people know about this. A lot of people use it. A lot of people enjoy it. This one came up recently. I was I was pulling cards while watching a candy video. Was it candy? Someone was talking about snakes, and I still have a very snaky moment right now. Um, <laughs> and and yeah, transformation and creation and you know the will of the universe and. Just Stuff. And this is the warrior card, so it's very... Mm. Anyway, my brain went all sorts of different directions with that one. Very beautiful. But yeah, no, this one... I've been... Yeah, this is a, this is a great deck of 2022. I get it in August, maybe? And then my curiosity led me in this direction. I won't talk about this one too long because I, I went on to, about it a little bit too long in the last video. But I started... I gave the Wild Unknown Tarot a try. And I really like it. I think, you know, it's, it's place in tarot history is justified, I will say. Um, again, I will also say it's not a beginner deck. It's very much a pip deck. But if you are quite familiar with the energies of the, you know, individual tarot cards from, from study, then you'll pick this up, no problem. And it's just a really quick and easy, easy reader. Like, it's not... It's not, it's not like an airy deck. It's not like the Hermetic Tarot, which has all the information on it. It's an ener it's, it's energetic, it's an energetic signature on a card. Um, it's, as I said, I labeled it a fire deck, whereas the Hermetic Tarot is thoroughly an air deck. This one is a fire deck. It reads very energetically, spiritually, very, you know, like you get, I, don't know, I, 
feel like you can just feel it by looking at it, right? Like, you're maybe not even sure what you're looking at, but, but you see it and you understand it. Like, the lower layers of your brain kind of see it and understand it. Which is great. So yeah, if you've already got a good understanding of tarot, then, then, then yeah, this one's going to be a, a great one for, for reading with. So I won't make you look at it for too much longer, but <laughs> the last couple of months, month, I, okay, no, I've only had this one since the end of November. So not even a month, like maybe a month. Yeah. I've had this one for a month, one out of the 12 months. And it like made an impression enough to make it onto the list. So, so that's the thing. And then I guess the last one that I kind of would really like to, to give another shining moment to because I had I had a pretty intense um, time with this one is is this beastie um, and I, I really enjoyed it this year. This is the Cosmic Tribe Tarot and it's, it's the array of decks that I have chosen this year are hilarious they really are i'm all over the place across the board but that's okay it fits it works but this was this came into my life at the height of the um the the, the collage deck extravaganza probably that would have been last winter last winter last spring winter spring i was having a moment with collage decks as i think a lot of people were and this one just oh it tickled me pink <laughs> so good uh anyway it's a, a thothy a thothy clone it's got like that, you know, ridiculous, a little bit 80s, 90s, early 2000s, you know, rough digital collage, I guess. But it's, it's beautiful. It just, I don't know, I fell in love with it. It was, it's just a great, a fun, energetic reader. It kind of, um, it fits, especially with the use of the guidebook and the way it's written. It's, it just fits really nicely into that kind of like positive, happy, like, I want to say like new age mindset, but not like in the kind of dangerous new age mindset kind of way. If you know what I mean? Oh, does that sound bad? I just, I don't know. It's like a friend, you know, friend who's been through it, seen the world, you know, done some shit, but you know, but they've done the work and now they're here sharing what they know with you. And it's, it's incredible. Who fell out? Oh, the Knight of Discs fell out. <sighs> yeah, that's my, um, my court card. And the Thoth deck. That's the one for my birthday. Also, it's a nice saying that, like, it just ye old reliable has done the work. Here to share. So, cool. Love that. Anyway, this deck has been great. So I couldn't, I probably couldn't not talk about it. This deck was... <laughs> It was just fun. It was a romp. It was like way different than anything else I've been working with. Like energetically, it's it's fun. It's whimsical. It's like it's like cool. <laughs> Might be too cool for me actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's on it's on weird cardstock. I should hate it, but I don't. I don't know. It's just weird, and I love it. So yes, that one that one had a moment this year as well, and I like I couldn't couldn't not talk about it. In the, in the roundup at the end of the year. <laughs> Alrighty, I'll wrap this up at the risk of this video getting too long. Um, there's a ton more decks I could talk about. I used I used so many decks this last year and it's been amazing and I've loved every second of it. Um, just the, the new takes on tarot, just a, a new and fresh experience. It's just been amazing. But I think these ones are like, these are the core. These are the tippity top on my list for this year. And I guess technically the alchemical tarot, which lives up there, but I'm not going to get it down. <laughs> You've seen it, you know, it's the blue sky edition. Um, Robert and place decks are top notch, but yeah, I, but it's because I have a specific purpose for that one. Um, I think if I didn't have that specific purpose for that deck, it wouldn't be on my most used list. So there's that, but yes, yeah, so at the, at the risk of this video being like super, super long, I'm going to just kind of cap it at that. So yeah, that's. That's, that's pretty exciting. Um, there's, I should probably mention the Cantor G Oracle, but I, it, it's too new. We only just, we're on the second card of the yearly walk with it. So I'm thinking that'll be, that'll be next year's deck. It'll get the spotlight next year. 
right now the camera is resting on its box <laughs> but, uh, but yeah no that one is amazing incredible phenomenal but i think i just i only just got it it's too soon to even think of including it in in a yearly wrap-up but just know be prepared for a lot of candy content next year because <laughs> yeah it's it's already like just like flipping things around for me it's so good and it gives you homework who doesn't love it an oracle deck that gives you homework yes yes i want homework but uh but yeah so that's that's the depth year that's the decks that i've worked with that's my word of the year um the only other thing i kind of want to touch on briefly is just kind of like my journaling practice which <laughs> practice i'm a free writer always have been always will be i've tried to plan can't do it i even managed to get out like when i was in public school i used to get out of having to keep an agenda you know how we used to have like to keep an agenda agenda and then get our parents to sign it every day in the evening so like they looked at what you you know had to do anyway i got out of having to have them sign it because they were just never around so i'm like oh they're they work all the time they're not home like i can't get my parents to sign my agenda so i just didn't i got out of having to journal like to to plan to agendize while i was in public school so i'm obviously it's not gonna be a thing i'm gonna do as an adult right um so i just free write whenever i feel the need i write and it happens it's great it's wonderful i fill journals at the rate i fill them it varies i've got like four or five on the go at a time it's wonderful um i have a um herbal journal going right now where i'm just it's i'm just keeping the information that i want to keep about my experience working with plants and plant davis etc in that one via essential oils essences and other medium i also have the which has turned into book of shadows re more type of thing um just which i have all of my tarot information it's in that one that one keeps it's a very has to be very specific information that goes in that one i have the journal that i write when i do readings for other people in and i have the one that i write when i do readings for myself in and then there's like there's the you know brain dump one and then my traveler's notebook for when i go away so i don't have a i have a like a fold out calendar page where i just like write my work days on and like if we have family appointments or anything but i like to keep my life uncomplicated enough to not need a planner <laughs> if i if my life is complicated so much so that i need to like plan it out in a planner style it's too complicated i need to take a step back so it's like a good gauge for me to be like okay nope if, if I, there's too many things to be scheduled i this is not we need to cut some things off the list because that's too much so it's been a great system it's been working really well for me so far and let's not mess with a good thing um and i don't use fancy pens i just use like a this is a tombow this is a soft tip one these are nice and um yeah i just i i i kind of want to make like a cool junk journal but i just don't i don't know if i'm that kind of person you know I just write with black ink on white or cream paper and it does the trick. Some, look at that. Readings. Readings. Some, some Tree of Life stuff. A little flap. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just, I'm not going to commit to anything. I come and go as I please. I do what I want. It's great. It's been working well let's not mess with a good thing what did i write here let's see what i wrote in my journal about my journaling plans i have no particular resolutions or goals air quotes um i am not and never have been a goals person <laughs> the word itself implies competition and even with myself that feels uncomfortable <laughs> look at me <laughs> i shall enjoy existing simply no unnecessary pressure existence alone is bliss thanks me <laughs> sorry i hope that doesn't sound too ridiculous but yeah no, that's that's the mindset i wanted to like keep going if there's something in my brain that wants out put it down no pressure to make it look or feel a certain way it'll just be what it's gonna be no expectations no like i'm not trying to make it any like particularly aesthetic thing journaling is just a thing i do for me and as soon as i put pressure or like try to like make it a certain thing is when i stop doing things so Learning lessons the hard way over and over and over again, am I right? <laughs> really? <Anywho. laughs> okay, that'll be that'll be this video, I think. <laughs> that's everything. That's the catch up. That's the, you know, depth year update slash roundup slash that's the depth year um finale. Woo woo. Um I'm not gonna call next year depth year, but I'm just gonna like 
keep going as I'm going because it's going well. <laughs> so, um, I've still got the Deccan walk going. I've got the Cantigy walk going. I have the Marseille studies coming up. Like I'm going to be depthing next year as well, but it's just going to be less, less structured, same structured. I've just kind of adopted a habit, adopted practices and it's going to be, and it's great. So, so yes. <laughs> If you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much. Rambly video alert. But anyway, I really appreciate it with my whole heart. I hope you had the best time. And I really wish you absolutely all the best in the next year. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be incredible. Can't wait. This tower moment is going to be fun. Get my parachute. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much. I'll see all of you fine people in my next video.